Hi guys, Miss Horman again, doing Pacific. This is video four on the art of um, Oceania and Pacific. Uh, and we only have two images left to do. Um, so our Malagan display and mask uh, from the New Ireland province of Papua New Guinea. So when we look at here is the edge of Papua New Guinea, then there's this little string of islands right here. And then there's another little string of islands up above it. This is where we are looking at. Okay, this is where our little island is here. So in that little group of islands right up there. Okay. And then our next one is, um, here's the display. And then our next one is this really cool, um, it's photographs actually um, that take place uh, in Fiji. So let's go back to our very first one here. Um, and we are going to do some analysis uh, looking at um, our Malagan display and mask. So what does that mean? Well, let's start with, um, uh, we are looking at um, a mask from the New Ireland Providence of Papua New Guinea that was made in the 20th century. Um, it's made of wood, it's made of pigment or paint, um, fiber, so you can see the, the raffia in the back, and shell. Um, what is Malaga? Um, Malaga is a, um, a cycle of rituals celebrated by the people on the northern coast of um, the New Ireland island in Papua New Guinea. It is a very complex, very um, serious uh, religious and philosophical philosophy, philosophical philosophy, religious and social philosophy um, that uh, allows the community to honor their dead. And then this is gonna sound very strange, but to honor and dismiss their dead. What does that mean? So you get this mask made for you and they are made kind of like our masks in Africa at different stages of your life to document certain things that have happened to you. And you can have more than one made for you over the course of your lifetime and would have more than one made for you over the course of your lifetime. Um, when you die, all of your masks are put out on a display. Okay. Now, what you see here is a different type of um, mask than than these. But there's what you're looking at is a, a display, um, and there's these little things, and you would put your mask on here, and your masks, all of your masks that you gathered over your lifetime, would be displayed in this little house. Okay. And like I said, you would have m multiples. Uh, and there's always, when they're given, there are competitions for like the coolest mask or the, you know, most scary mask or the whatever mask. So um, there are um, most interesting masks. So you have these masks made for you to document important events in your life. And then when you die, and this is really a death thing, when you, and oh, and the, the masks are meant to be used. Um, and then you, um, you use them for dances, you use them for festivals, you use them for stuff. Um, and, and then this is going to sound crazy, but then when you die, they're all destroyed. Um, because they, they, they are not important anymore. They don't matter anymore. You're dead. We don't need them. And I'm going to talk to you about why that is. So it's okay that we have these masks because basically what the, the, the these people, um, that, that participate in this Malagan ceremony, uh, they believe that once the person for which for whom these masks were made um, is no longer alive, that the masks are no longer important or relevant. They become trash, um, and so th like they didn't care when they gave them to the anthropologist because they they were not important. So the masks are made at different stages of your life, and you have more than one. And then when you die, they're all made in they're all displayed in the little house, and then the and, and you. This little display, this little display of masks happens, can happen uh, several months after your death because they put all of the ones for people who have died recently up at the same time. Um, all these little displays in the sort of around the, the town, the, the village center. And um, there are ceremonies to basically, this is going to sound crazy, to basically free the living from their obligation to the dead. 
There is a ceremony that basically they believe that the, the spirits from the other world come into these display houses and push the spirit of the dead into the land of the dead. And that's why they leave them up for a little bit. They leave them up for a little bit to honor their life. And then the, the spirit of the dead inhabits it for a while. And then when they put out all the ones that are going to be put out um, and they're ready to do their, their big ceremony, they believe that the, the spirit comes in and pushes the souls of the dead, the spirits of the dead, all of them that they have out on these um, displays into the, the land of the dead. Okay. And then once that has happened, the living are freed forever from their obligations to the dead. So this is not um, a, a, a society where they would believe that you have to do something because dead grandma Susie would want you to. That, that's not their belief. Once you have had your, you know, your Malaga ceremony, you don't have to worry about what grandpa joe would want you to do you they have moved on and you are no longer bound to them this is also not a civilization where you would go and visit the the more the gravestone of your dead um you don't have to bring them flowers uh, like it once they have moved on you are expected also to move on um and it really is this idea that you are freed from your obligation to them. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to take care of them. They have moved on to a different place and, and, and you support that. Um, this display was given to um, a, an anthropologist whose name was Hugh Romley, um, who worked for the British Museum. Um, and uh, the display was given to him and then he gave the display to the British Museum. Um, because like I said, once, once the Malaga ceremony has taken place and, and the dead have departed, um, they're no longer necessary. Um, and so they, they were happily given. Um, so it's, this is a nice one to teach because I, I feel like I can teach and I don't have to feel bad. Like we didn't go and steal this from people who believe that it still has the spirit of, you know, grandma Susie, cause they don't believe that. Um, and so it's, um, it's one of the ones where you can teach it and you're like, Oh, okay, this is good. Um, so that's the Malagan display. And our last piece in um, Pacific uh, is this piece that is, it, it's, it's a photograph. It's just simply this photograph. Um, and it says presentation of Fijian mats and tapa cloths to Queen Elizabeth II. Okay. Fiji and Polynesia, which is, there you go. There's Fiji. There's the coast of Australia. There's Papua New Guinea. There's little New Ireland province. Here's Fiji, here's the South Pacific. Okay, so that's where we are, okay. And then you'll notice that what it says here for this particular piece is it, it says something that, you know, we really haven't seen yet. Um, and it says that it's a multimedia performance that involves cosmetics, including scents, chants, movements, and these fiber mats. Now these fiber mats, these tapa cloths are made from hibiscus fiber, um, which is a little bit different than the tapa cloths that we saw that were made into hypo. So this is our first piece of performance art. Um, and so what we need to think about is in 1953, Queen Elizabeth II had just become queen. And this is not one of your images, but it should be. Um, and when you, um, are crowned when you are, are coronated uh, and you become the new ruler. Typically, the the ruler of of, of the United Kingdom um, goes around to all of its territories um, and visits, and it is called a tour of the Commonwealth. And so the monarch visits all of the territories that belong to them. Um, and so what you see here is this is a photograph of Queen Elizabeth. Um, during um, her visit to Fiji, which is a, a British, uh, a holding, a British territory. And you see um, Queen Elizabeth walking um, through, uh, down the sidewalk uh, where people have lined the sidewalk. There's also all these people here. She's being greeted um, um, by these women who are, are welcoming her to Fiji. 
and they are sitting in skirts that are made of fur cloth. Um, this is the queen. She is sitting, um, she is walking in a skirt that is made of fur cloth. Um, this is Prince Philip, uh, the queen's husband. Um, uh, and then, so what you, what you're looking at um, is you're, you're looking at her exploring her new territory. And so what is here is, sorry, oh, for goodness sake, you see these women also in bark cloth skirts carrying these huge mats. And if you'll remember back to when we did the hypo piece, that some of the pieces can be ceremonial. And so what you see here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 14, 15, at least 15 pieces of this tapa mat being presented um, to Queen Elizabeth for a commemoration of her becoming the ruler of this area, okay? So again, they're covered with geometric patterns. They are, they are taken, the mats are taken to where the queen is sitting um, on a, like a little stage. Um, they are set down in front of her. Um, then these women do a, a ceremonial dance honoring her. Uh, and then there is a tea ceremony where the the monarch is handed the first sip of tea and she takes the sip of tea and then the the ruler of of the this polynesian tribe polynesian group um takes a sip of tea and and they you know recognize that they they rule together um and so what you're looking at are if you're looking at them you're going to notice there's not a lot of detailing on them there's not a lot of drawing and this particular area in fiji which is separate from where we were before um the simpler the mats the more important the more simple they were the more meaning they had and so because this is a really momentous event uh these are fairly simple um uh mats um they are often presented here in Fiji as wedding gifts or to signify a, um, an important event, uh, the birth of a child, um, the, the raise and stature of someone in the community, uh, things like that. And so this is, um, we see this being put into, um, into use here with the women with their face painted and wearing particular perfume and dancing for her and presenting these maps to her. And so what we see is photographic documentation. It's, it's um, they're not giving you the video, they just want you to have a photograph of this is what happened when these mats were presented to Queen Elizabeth in, 1940, in 1953. Um, and so that, my darlings, is the end of um, the Pacific. Uh, and so, um, you know, we will have, um, a test, uh, open note, it's not a big deal. Um, we've had only 11 images in Pacific, so it's really not, or 11 works in Pacific. So it's, you know, really not that much. But now we've ended our, our study of the Pacific uh, area. And um, uh, next we get to move on to a global contemporary, which is one of my favorites because it is still so relevant because it is happening. Um, so I will next time.